Chicago police officers are poorly trained, too quick to use excessive force, and too apt to use that force against blacks and Latinos. That's according to a blistering 164-page report released by the U.S. DOJ on Friday. The report describes, quote, a culture in which officers expect to use force and not be questioned about the need for or propriety of that use. The report also confirms a longtime contention of black and Hispanic Chicagoans that police unfairly target minorities. The city has signed an agreement to work with federal officials and an independent overseer. Among the remaining questions, will the decidedly pro-police incoming Attorney General Jeff Sessions embrace the findings. Joining me now, former Chicago police officer Brian Warner, who's the chair of Chicago Police Survivors, and civil rights attorney Areva Martin. Let's look at some of the data. The data first relative to police stops. If we could put that up on the screen, because unquestionably what has gone down by 80 percent are the number of Chicago police stops between August of 2015 and August of 2016. And now let's look at the murder rate the murder rate of Chicago in 2016 in comparison to New York and Los Angeles. In fact, I should say New York and Los Angeles combined from a distance. It looks, Ariva, like there's a choice. Either you let the police take the gloves off and the murder rate comes down or you put them in short pants and then you've got this explosion of crime. Respond to that logic. Well, that's a completely false narrative, Michael. You're making the assumption that making unconstitutional stops of African-Americans and Latinos somehow impacts the murder rate and that you're conflating things that that have not been appropriately analyzed and should not be conflated. Look, what that report did was show what Chicagoans have known for decades. I was a college student in Chicago in the 80s and the reputation, the racist reputation of the Chicago Police Department was known widely in that city. Af uh, African Americans and Latinos in Chicago have known for decades that they were targeted by police officers, that their rights were violated, and some of the facts in that report are really too hard to imagine. Taking young black men into gang territories, threatening them by saying, we're going to expose you to other gang members, uh, using the F word repeatedly, uh, using excessive force when there was no purpose or justification for using it. And now the question becomes, what happens to that investigation? What happens to those findings when we have Jeff Sessions saying he doesn't believe that the federal government should investigate police departments, nor should it file the kind of civil rights lawsuits that we've seen under Eric Holder and Loretta Lynch. I am terrified for the African Americans, men and women that live in the city of Chicago, because there is no guarantee that their rights will be protected under this attorney general. I'm going to come back to Jeff Sessions in a moment, but Brian, first respond to the way in which I looked at that data and I said, well, maybe this is what happens when the police feel inclined to take it down a few notches. Well, l let me first start by saying my worst nightmare has just been confirmed because uh, we're using this report as not a tool to grow and learn from and move forward. We're using for another, uh, another example to vilify the police. If we can take this, this report and look at it in its entirety and, and implement all these things that the, the, uh, just, uh, the DOJ is recommending, we have the best trained police department. We put cameras on everyone. We uh, put tasers on everybody's hip. We train in de-escalation. We train in uh, crisis intervention, and we have the best trained, best equipped police department money can buy. Great thing, right? Well, I'm not what vilifying. I'm not vilifying the no, police, no, no, and no, I don't no, think no, that Ariva vilified the police. But, but wait a minute. To look at the data, to look at the data is to conclude that when there are fewer encounters with the public by the police, there is a dramatic increase in the murder rate. Sure. We, we, we talked about that last week. We talked about the reasons. But if I can finish my sentence, uh, the, so we get the best trained police department. We, we put all, change our practices and policies. We're, we do everything that you're asking us to do. What has not changed is what's happening in the communities. You have the real epidemic here is young black men killing each other at a rate of 800 a year. We have 4,500 people shot. The police were involved in only 25 of those shootings. I say only because that's what happens on an average weekend in Chicago with the, the, the crime that the young black men perpetuate on one another. 25 but, but people Michael. shot and two murdered. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Ariva. Go ahead. No, I'm just going to say black on black crime has nothing to do with the 
findings in that report. We can deal with black on black crime, but we also have to deal with what that report tells us. It is unambiguous that the Chicago Police Department has violated a pattern and practice of violations of African Americans and Latinos rights for decades in the city of Chicago. That has to be dealt with and it has to be dealt with very separately from the fact of what you're talking about, which is African Americans who are killing other African Americans in Chicago. Let's deal with the police. The police are hired to protect and serve. They act under the authority of the government. That's a very different issue than the crime that you're describing that's happening in some communities in Chicago. And we can't conflate the two. Hey, Brian, I'm going to let you respond to that. But let me let me say to let me say to Ariva, if I might, Ariva, I hear this criticism from from radio callers. Don't we spend more time evaluating the police conduct than we do investigating and discussing some of the underlying problems that create the murder rate? To Brian's point, will you respond to that? Yes, let's talk about those underlying problems, but let's talk about them realistically, Michael. The issues of unemployment, the issues of poor schools, <clears throat> the issues of a lack of jobs and lack, lack of opportunities in those communities. When uh, pundits want to talk about black on black crime, they want to talk about thugs. They want to talk about uh, the causes, but they don't want to talk about the things that are happening in the communities that perpetuate that crime. I want to have a conversation about lack of economic opportunities. I want to have a conversation about the poor school systems, the uh, inability of African American men, the criminalization of small crimes like uh, marijuana. Let's talk about the privatization of okay. the prison population. There's so many things we should be and we'd love to talk about, but we can't ignore the things in that report that justify a, a really deep dive into the violations of the rights of African Understood. Americans in let the city me, of Chicago. Let me give Brian. Brian, you've got the final 30 seconds. Go ahead. I, 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 I certainly think we're being short sighted by saying that these things are not all connected. The, the, the breakdown of the family uh, uh, unit in, in the black community, the, uh, the lack of uh, uh, positive black male role models, all these things that we've talked about, the 52 percent unemployment rate of black males between the age of 18 and 24, these are not police issues. And these are the root of the cause of why this hopelessness leads to the senseless violence that we have on our streets today. We all need to step up and stop pointing fingers and saying, you're the problem, you're the problem. We need to get together, the judicial system, law enforcement, our politicians, uh, most importantly, elected officials, the mayor, can't stand up there and say this report and blame it all on the police and say, okay, we're going to fix the police department, everything is going to go away. We know that's too short sighted. Everybody has to step up Brian, and do their part and stop blaming. <clears throat> Brian Warner and Ariva Martin, I wish I had more time. My it's an important subject, gang. I wish, I wish, every day I wish we had more opportunity. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Thank you, Ariva, as always. Thanks, up next, imagine, imagine that you're moving in just six days, but didn't have to worry about packing. Next Friday, White House staff will handle all the details of getting the Obamas out and the Trumps in, and they will do it all in just about six hours. How do they do that?